Now before we jump into this video and I share with you the different types of syllables, let's address how many syllable types there actually are. In many resources out there, you're going to hear that there are six different syllable types. However, that information is outdated and there are no longer six syllable types because there are seven syllable types. Much like how there used to be nine planets, but now there are eight planets because Pluto's not technically a planet, it's a ball of gas. Anyways, it's important that you know that there are seven different syllable types and it's important that you also know why we have to teach syllable types. And these seven different syllable types will help children decode and break down unknown words into smaller, more manageable chunks. This is especially helpful when teaching struggling readers. Now let's talk about the seven different syllable types and how they're used in explicit and structured literacy with common English words. You know what? Let me just jump on the computer and show you. Closed syllables are simply when a syllable has a consonant to the right of the vowel. That vowel will make the short vowel sound and the short vowel sound is the typical sound that we teach the children. So in the example muffin, the U makes the uh sound and the I makes the I sound. So when you put those together, both of those syllables, muff and fin, are both closed syllables making in their vowels say the short vowel sound. Open syllables are simply when a syllable does not have a consonant to the right of the vowel. The vowel will be open, thus making it say the long vowel sound or say its name. We always say making the vowel say its name and that's technically what it is doing. So in the word open, the O in open has an open syllable because O says its name. It says O and then the second syllable is pen and the E makes the short vowel sound so pen is actually a closed syllable while O is an open syllable. Magic E or vowel consonant E just simply means a vowel has a spelling pattern of vowel consonant E and the vowel will then make its long vowel sound or say its name and the E then becomes silent. So in the example unsafe that A now makes the long vowel sound saying its name or saying the A sound and the E is silent unsafe. The next syllable is bossy R or R controlled syllables. And this is simply when a vowel is immediately followed by the letter R. The R is so bossy that it overpowers the short vowel sound, such as the word utter. That E is overpowered by that R, making it make the er sound. We also have vowel team syllables. And this is simply when two vowels are side by side, the first vowel will make its long vowel sound and the second vowel will become silent. These vowels become one sound like EA or EE or OA. Now these are all predictable vowel teams. There are also unpredictable vowel teams. In this case the vowel team would make a completely new sound like the OO vowel team in the word book. Now predictable vowel teams such as those displayed on the screen are shown here in the example repeat that E then says its long vowel sound and the A then becomes silent. Diphthongs are when two letters are combined and they make an entire new vowel sound such as the sound oi in toy or all in the word awful. Next we have consonant LE and this is when a syllable ends in a consonant and then the letters L E. E. In this case, the consonant with the LE will be represented as a vowel sound and become its own syllable, such as in the word ample, pole becomes its own syllable. Now that you understand the different types of syllables, let's talk about which syllable should actually be taught first. Syllable types need to be taught in a very systematic way in order to avoid any major foundational learning gaps with children. I mean, if you don't do them in order, children will be even more confused than they already were in the first place. And now your chance to actually help them just drastically decrease. Closed syllables should be the first syllable 
syllable type taught to children. And most curriculums, including my finest curriculum in syllable boot camp, already start off with closed syllables, so you technically don't have anything to worry about. Just trust the process. Now, earlier I shared with you these syllable type posters, but I didn't quite share with you that you can grab these absolutely free. Let's see smarter, not harder, honey. <laughs> Now, learning these seven different syllable types can certainly get you started with teaching syllables with explicit instruction literacy. But if you're not teaching these syllable types along with syllable divisions, then children will drastically struggle when it comes to breaking down unknown words. And that's why it's important for you to watch this video so I can really break down exactly how to teach syllable division along with these seven different syllable types. See you in that video.